Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. If Christ had not been raised from death, our faith would be in vain. Our preaching but a waste of breath, our sin and guilt remain. But now the Lord is risen, and he rules in earth and heaven. His gospel meet a world of need, in Christ we are forgiven. If Christ still lay, if in a tomb, then death would be the end. And we should face our final doom with neither guide nor friend. But now the Savior is raised up, so when he cards dies, we mourn, yet look to God in hope, in Christ the saints arise. If Christ had not been truly raised, his church would live a lie. His name should never be ever praised, his words deserve to die. But now our great Redeemer lives, through him we are restored. His word endures, his church revives, in Christ our risen Psalm 116. I love the Lord, for he has heard the cry of my appeal. For he turned his ear toward me and answered me quickly when I called him. They surrounded me, the snares of death, the anguish of the tomb. They caught me sorrow and distress. I called on the Lord's name, O Lord my God, deliver me. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. O precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make, I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, God of power and mercy, through the passion and resurrection of your Son, you have freed us from the bonds of death and the anguish of separation from you. Be with us on our pilgrimage and help us offer you a sacrifice of praise. Fulfill our vows and glorify you in the presence of all your people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from 1 Peter, the first chapter. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear 
during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. Here ends the reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. The psalmist speaks of the vows that he had made. We make many promises in life. But using the word vow carries with it a deep significance. We sometimes talk about a baptismal vow, when we commit to the faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, into whose name we are baptized. We speak of confirmation vows, when we pledge to be faithful unto death, knowing that God has given us a crown of life. We talk about marriage vows. When husband and wife commit to one another a shared and common life of mutual love and service and giving. And then, for some of us, we speak of ordination vows. That commitment to the biblical faith as it's been explained to us in Luther's small catechism, a commitment to holy living insofar as we are able, a commitment to proclaim the word of God and to administer the gifts of his sacraments, to teach young and old, to guide in days of joys and sorrows, as we all together as the people of God, journey on this pilgrimage, this exodus journey towards a promised land far greater than a bit of Middle Eastern real estate, but the promised land that is the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven that has come near when Jesus arrived, the kingdom of heaven that was inaugurated not with a crown of gold, but a crown of thorns, it was the bringing about of that kingdom that came to its conclusion with Jesus' words, it is finished. It was a kingdom manifest in glory at Jesus' resurrection, a kingdom looked forward to as he ascended to the right hand of his Father, a kingdom to be proclaimed to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem and Samaria, and to all the ends of the earth by God's people. And so we live the life of our vows, the vows that God has first made to us, that covenant that has echoed through all of human history, I will be your God, you will be my people. It is a covenant made certain when the new covenant was given to us in Jesus Christ, when his body and blood would be poured out for us and for the forgiveness of sins. And so we commit to that faith that we have received as a gift 
and renew our vows and commitment. And to do what? I will call on the Lord's name. Indeed, we do. We call on the Lord who speaks to us in that eternal word that was our reading for today. It was a reflection on what this life to which we are committed as baptized, blood-bought, believing Christians involves. It is when we come out of those waters, when God has said, child of God, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever, that we then can truly say, our Father who art in heaven, and invoke the name of Jesus' Father and ours by grace. And Peter would have us know that if we are to live this life of commitment as Christians, if we are to invoke God as our Father who art in heaven, we need to remember that he's the one who judges, and judges not with favoritism for one group over another, but judges all according to their deeds. Of course, it is our deeds which so often fail to live up to God's grace. But there is that gift of faith that has been given us where we can say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in that confession of faith, fulfill the first and the greatest of commandments to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And then we spend our lifetime living in that covenant relationship. Peter invites us to live in reverent fear during this time of your exile, because while we have received God's gift of salvation, we have not yet crossed the Jordan to the promised land. We live in these days when, like the children of Israel, we may be tempted to grumble and complain and set up our own golden calves of our own making. But we have been ransomed from all of that, Peter reminds us. Ransomed from those pointless, futile ways that have been the ways of every generation of humanity. We were ransomed that the payment was made to our captor, sin, death, and Satan himself. And we didn't, he didn't pay a ransom with things like gold or silver, but with the precious blood of Christ. Like the paschal lamb without defect or blemish, he was destined from the beginning of time, from before time began, as the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds. And yet he was manifest. He was revealed in the fullness of time at this, the end of all the ages, when he took on human flesh and blood of the Virgin Mary for us and for our salvation who through his exodus, through suffering and death and burial, towards resurrection and eternal life, he was given glory. Through him you have come to trust in this God, who's revealed himself in his Son, who has raised him from the dead and gave him glory. And to what end? so that your faith and your hope are set on God. I will be your God is that covenant vow that God made with us first. It is the call of the gospel through the Holy Spirit that enables us to respond in faith, therefore to live in hope for the future that he has prepared for us. We've been through those baptismal waters where our souls were purified. 
and we have been given the gift of obedience to the truth, to the truth that is the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. And in so doing, having this faith, living in this hope, we have genuine mutual love. God's love for us, our love for him. And so we are invited by St. Peter to this resurrection Easter life in which we love one another as well, deeply and from the heart. It's not always easy to love people that sometimes the old Adam in us simply does not like. But the old Adam in us has been drowned and we have been born again. As St. Peter said, you've been born anew, not of imperishable, but a perishable but imperishable seed through the living and the enduring word of God. The word of the Lord endures forever. That phrase taken from the prophet Isaiah became a motto for the Lutheran Reformation in the 16th century and continues to guide our life. We have received God's pledge of grace and mercy to us, and so, in grateful response, we respond with making our vows to the Lord before all his people. Yes, here, it is the cup of salvation that we raise when we call on the name of the Lord when that new covenant is shared in Christ's body and blood. That is our thanksgiving sacrifice that we make, as the psalmist said. It happens in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, O St. Mark's, O one holy Christian and apostolic church, who lives to the praise and glory of God, who has redeemed us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. United in the hope and the joy of resurrection, let's pray for the church, the world, and for all in need. Ever-present God, you make yourself known in the breaking of the bread and in the bonds of community. Reveal yourself to us in the faces of all we meet. Strengthened by your body and blood, let us boldly live out your good news. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. As we know you in the breaking of the bread, we know you in the grains of the field and the flowering waters. Care for the earth your, that you lovingly created. Strengthen those who safeguard threatened lands and waters. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You are the authority to whom we dedicate our lives. Help us keep the needs of those most vulnerable at the forefront of our community. Move us to care for any who are disregarded or oppressed. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Our Father in heaven, you feed and comfort those who hunger. Open the hearts of those who hoard resources and lead them to share your abundance. We pray for any who hunger for your comforting presence in this day. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You pour out your love on those who are oppressed. Support and comfort anyone who is marginalized and those whose stories are not believed. Form this community to listen faithfully and speak honestly in our ministry together. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We remember with thanksgiving all your beloved saints, including St. Mark the Evangelist and patron of our parish. 
St. Catherine of Siena, and Johann Walter. As you raised them up to eternal life, abide with us in your promise of resurrection. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you've caused all of Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.